Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the brand new Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism Palette. This is a limited edition palette for the holidays 2017. I am so excited for this palette and I created a look with it today. I'm obsessed so far. So today I'm going to be reviewing, swatching, and showing you guys a tutorial using this eyeshadow palette. So if you guys are curious about my thoughts and review, then just keep on watching. <laughs> So, so far, as far as I know, this is limited edition for the holiday season, and you guys, it's going to be hard to keep up with Anastasia because there are a lot of eyeshadow palettes in the works. There's going to be a Norvina palette, which is the daughter of Anastasia herself. There is going to be another Nicole Guerrero collaboration, which looks like it's going to be an eyeshadow palette, and there is word of another Makeup by Mario palette. So, we are going to have to keep our options open, or we're going to have to be ready to purchase all of them which is probably what I'm going to do. Let's be real. But this Prism palette here retails for $42, the same as the Modern Renaissance and Subculture. It has the same velvet touch of the packaging, and it has beautiful chic gold writing on it with the triangle patterns. I'm obsessed with the looks of this palette. I love black and gold. I think it's so chic, so I'm loving the outer packaging of this. I think it's one of the nicest palettes that I have in my collection as far as packaging. So right now I am going to leave where this is available down below. I believe it's only available on the Anastasia website. I was waiting for it to come out on Sephora, but it didn't, so I ended up expediting it on the Anastasia website, which I do recommend. It costs $4 for faster shipping, and it came in two days. So I will never not purchase that again, because when I don't purchase that, I have a hard time with Anastasia's website, so that's why I was looking to get it off of Sephora. But it is going to come to Sephora, I think. I really don't know. So I will leave where it's available when this video goes up down in the description box if you guys want to shop for it from there. But let's get into this review. So here are the 14 shades inside the palette. It is a little bit messy because I did work with it today on my eyes. But I am going to swatch each of these shades individually for you guys and talk about my thoughts on the actual eyeshadows. If you guys are familiar with me, I do talk a lot and I cover all of my bases in a review. So if you want to see the tutorial or swatches or you want to skip ahead to something, check the description box. I will have my timestamps down there so you can skip ahead in this video if you want to. So as always, this palette comes with a double-sided brush. And don't sleep on this brush, you guys. It's a really, really good brush. The blending side blends beautifully and then the other side is great for picking up the shadow and packing it all over the lid. So I do highly recommend hanging on to these at the very least, but they work really well with the shadows. That's what they're meant for. So give it a chance if you have not already. So I kind of just want to swatch these for you really quickly, kind of informally, just because I want to talk about each shade. We're going to start off with the shade Lucid. Lucid is this white shimmery shade right here. It's kind of hard for me to pick up the shadows, so bear with me. I have really long nails right now. Here's Lucid on my middle finger. It looks like it has a golden shift to it. So there is Lucid, and yes, I swatch with my middle finger. So this Lucid shade really screams winter to me. I feel like it's very suitable for a holiday palette with the white and gold shift. Next up, we have a matte called Eden, and it looks like a peachy shade. There is Eden. As you can see, it's a little bit more powdery. I do my swatches for color reference. I don't feel like a swatch is ever really a great representation of a shadow. They always perform differently on the eyes, so I do these for color reference only, really, and texture. Next up is this matte, yellowy, kind of cream color. This is called Unity. I used this in my crease today. I forgot to show you Eden on my finger, but this is Unity. So that kind of blends in with my skin tone. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it's kind of like just a buttery color. Next up is my favorite shade out of the palette. This is Sphinx. It is a foiled bronze color. This one has such a weird texture to it when you feel it. It almost feels wet. I said that in the tutorial portion, but 
it's like almost like a putty formula I don't know whatever formula it is it really helps the pigmentation so I love this shade there is sphinx on my finger and there is sphinx swatched on my arm and it's all over my eyelid today Next up is a metallic navy blue color called Osiris, and I'm hoping it has the same formula as the Sphinx color. It does. So there is Osiris on my finger. And there it is swatched next to Sphinx. This one is very different. It's a navy blue, but it has like magenta flecks of glitter in it. Very pretty and very unique. Okay, so we have a neon. This one called Sphere is a neon yellow lime color. Kind of nervous to swatch this one. I don't know how it's going to do. Hopefully it does well. I don't know about this color though. Like this is not something that I would really play around with, I don't think. There it is on my finger. It's definitely more of a sheer eyeshadow. It's kind of hard to build up the pigmentation on this one. I don't think it's going to swatch the greatest. Not horrible. That is Sphere. I feel like if you wanted that to actually show up the way it does in the pan, you would have to almost have a white base all over your eye first. Next up, we have a black in the palette called Obsidian. I love when palettes include a black. I know that a lot of them do, but I like it because you can really create like a deep, deep smoky look if there's a black in the palette. So there is obsidian on my finger. It definitely looks very, very black on camera, but I can kind of see through it in real life. So there's kind of a better representation. Obsidian is definitely not the most pigmented black that I have in my collection, but that can kind of save you if you're not used to using a black shadow. You can build that pigmentation up instead of being kind of stuck with a super dark pigmentation right off the bat. Next up is a very pretty shade that I am excited to play around with. It's next on my list for eye looks, and this is the shade Dimension. This looks like it's going to be a metallic kind of icy blue like slate gray color. So there is Dimension on my finger. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. I cannot wait to do a look with that one. That is the most intense metallic that I have swatched so far. Next up, we have a brown matte shade called Parallel. This is what I use to deepen up my eye look and used in my crease today. That was a terrible swatch. But that one is definitely more pigmented than the Sphere shade, but... I swatched it horribly, so I'm sorry for that. Next up, we have a beautiful true gold metallic. This is called Pyramid. There it is on my finger, though. Very vibrant and beautiful. So there is Pyramid. Very beautiful, very metallic and pigmented. Next up is a beautiful forest green color called Throne. That is very pigmented. That is Throne. So there is a throne. As you can see, it's a very rich shadow, one of the best swatches of the day. Next up, we have a burnt orange matte shade called Saturn. So there is Saturn. Not very good swatches, you guys. I'm sorry. But hopefully you guys can see the color. It's very beautiful. So this is a very fiery metallic called Eternal. I feel like it would look really beautiful with that shade paired together. I feel like it'd be a beautiful eye look. My finger is getting dirty, but you guys can see Eternal on it. It just looks like the most beautiful, like, melted down penny that I've ever seen. <laughs> that one is just like butter. That is a beautiful, beautiful formula. So next up we have a cool tone kind of mauve shade. This is a matte. It's called Lure. And I feel like it would look really, really beautiful with Dimension. I like that I can see some looks in this palette. Like I don't have to be confused about what looks good together. I feel like I can see looks in my head if that makes sense. So that is the last shade I need to swatch for you guys. So there is Lure. So there's the lineup, you guys. Hopefully my swatches are helpful. I know that some of them are not the best swatches in the world, 
but as you can see I think that my favorite formula out of here is the metallics I feel like this is very very suitable for the holidays I think you can get some gorgeous looks out of it and I am very very inspired by my swatches to start creating some looks with this palette so I think that this palette is standalone. I think it's beautiful, even though I did already purchase the Subculture palette. I do want to quickly show you guys the palettes compared so you guys can judge for yourself if you feel like you need it in your life or not. So here is the Prism palette, and here is the Subculture palette. So from a glance, they do look very similar, I know, but I feel like the Prism palette has a lot more gold, bronze, like wearable looks, whereas the Subculture has a lot of focus on mustard, green, and it has like maroon. It has some different shades in it. So I don't feel like they are very, very similar, but if you guys feel like they are too similar to justify the purchase, that is completely up to you. I'm just gonna come out and say that personally, I like the Prism palette a lot more. I love this. I feel like I had no problems with the blendability whatsoever, and I feel like the palette was very, very cohesive. I feel like it flows nicely, and there's a bunch of looks that are calling out to me from this palette. So today I did create a bronze smoky eye with this Prism palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the tutorial portion of this video. It was the first time using this palette on my eyes, and then I am going to go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts. Okay, so this is going to be my first time playing around with the palette. I still don't know what I wanna do, so I wanted to kind of figure it out on camera with you guys instead of just doing it off camera and we'll work through it together and see how this performs for the first time. So let's all just take a second and enjoy the untouched shadows. I think with my new hair color, I wanna do like a bronze smoky eye. I wanna start out with a really fluffy diffused crease brush and then I will go in with a little bit of a smaller one to deepen it up later. I'm trying to figure out what color I want to use for my crease. I think I'm going to use this cream color called Unity in my crease. And I do have a base on my eye right now. It's MAC Painterly Paint Pot and some translucent powder. So I'm going to go in with this Unity color. There is a little bit of pickup. I don't know if you guys can see, but there is some fallout. Okay, this is definitely close to my skin tone. So not a whole lot going on with this color. It's just going to help everything else to blend. This is very blendable. There's no skipping or anything like that. I can see it. I'm fairly certain you guys can't. So we're just going to jump right into some browns. I want to use the matte brown in the palette. We're going to pick up parallel with the same brush and we're going to put this right over top, maybe a little bit lower than that crease color. This one does not have as much fallout at all. So it looks like the formulas within the palette might be a little bit different depending on the color that you're using. So I am going to slap this into my crease just a little bit lower than that Unity color. So I'm gonna try not to be afraid of pigment here. That's why I always come out more natural than I wanna be. I'm having a little bit of skipping with this color, but it's okay. I can cover that up with the bronze color later. It is diffusing nicely with the Unity shade. It's just a little bit of lid action with my paint pot probably is just skipping a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go back in with that Unity shade, and I'm going to try to make this blend a little bit more. All right, it is blending, so that's good. I'm gonna go in with this bronze shade called Sphinx, and I'm going to use my short shader from Sigma. This one definitely has more of a like foiled texture when I'm picking it up with the brush. This is very intense without wetting the brush, so I do enjoy that in a shadow. And I'm just going to fill up this entire lid space. I'm not being too precise because I am going to run back through the crease with more colors later. It's weird, this 
shadow is almost wet feeling when I pick it up with a brush. It's interesting. It almost feels like it has like a putty texture. I'm not getting a ton of fallout on my face, so that's good because I already did my face makeup. Now I'm going to run back through my crease with that matte brown parallel color. Mostly in the outer corner. I'm going to take the shade Parallel and I'm taking the smudger brush because I'm lazy and I'm just going to use this to smudge on my lower lash line. I've got some heavy bags today. Don't know why, probably lack of sleep. I'm just keeping this on the outer third. All of this will come together with lashes and mascara. Now taking a smaller blending, this is the E25 from Sigma, I'm going back into parallel again and I'm really going to focus this right here in the outer corner. And make sure that the lower lash line is fairly connected, I don't want it to have a disconnect. Alright, that's it for the eyeshadow. I know it looks a little bit crazy, but I'm going to go ahead and slap on lashes and mascara and I will show you the completed look. Okay guys, so that completes this video. I hope that the swatches and the tutorial were helpful for you. My final thoughts on this palette are that it is absolutely beautiful. To me, it's a must. I'm so glad that I bought it. I feel like I would recommend it to you guys. I'm probably going to be using it a lot in the holiday season. I can picture looks for Christmas, for New Year's. I really, really enjoy it. If you guys were simply wondering if this Prism palette is approved by me, then yes, it is. I highly recommend trying it out for yourself. If you guys have created any looks with this already, then please tag me in them for inspo. I definitely have a lot of inspiration just from the colors and the swatches alone. So if you guys want to see some tutorials with this, then let me know. I do hope that this video was helpful for you guys and that you liked it. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I put out new videos every single week and this holiday season is going to be jam-packed with reviews. We have a lot coming. It's a very hectic season. It's very overwhelming, but I am excited and hopefully I will get some reviews on some of the main items that you guys want to see. If you guys have any requests, leave them down below. Thank you guys again so much for watching and hopefully I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye.